Hi everyone, slightly different this week. I've got a really special guest with me. One of my biggest bugbears is that people think that the beauty industry is considered really superficial, fluffy, and just simply for the vein who just want to paint their face. Well, it really, really isn't. And both me and Lee are very aware of the confidence of boosting powers that makeup application gives. Now, I may sit here and teach you how to look at your eyebrows and look at your cheekbones and how to balance up the shape of your face, and trying to make you more mindful about your makeup application. But what Lee does is also allows you to be mindful of how you're feeling. Now, Lee is an exceptional makeup artist. I've known her for many years. She's had two decades of making up celebrities, shooting editorial, she's had her own agency. She's fabulous. She's also trained as a psychotherapist, so she has many, many skills. So I've brought her in today because she blows my mind with the way that she talks about how we feel day to day and how we can improve the way we feel in our really busy lives. So we're gonna talk about how to connect with your mind whilst you're doing your cleansing or your makeup and how to make yourself feel better through that process rather than doing it with a blank head or thinking about what you've got to buy at Sainsbury's or what you're gonna do with the kids, just to kind mm. of give you a bit of balance, right? Yeah, so it's all about a conscious beauty ritual, I would call it. Perfect. So in, a, in today, you know, stress is such a sort of overused word almost. We all feel a sense of stress. So how can we achieve a conscious beauty ritual so we don't only enhance the way we look, but we create more emotional balance too? Yes. So that's what I wanna to chat to you about today and share some of my therapeutic tools from my therapy room that I often use on clients as well, so that we can weave those in and just feel more emotionally balanced, right? right. So, um, when we are stressed, we are really triggering off the fight or flight response in our body. And this can create a sort of black and white style thinking, we can feel, and you know, it can lead into sort of anxious thoughts. So the first step in a conscious beauty ritual mm -hmm would be to center yourself and to start to calm your nervous system down. Right. Because when your nervous system is in the fight or flight response, that's what's creating all the bodily sensations that were linked to anxiety. And when you get centered and you tune into your breathing, I know everyone talks about breathing, right? But we need to do diaphragmatic breathing and the breathing that I use with my clients is called 7-Eleven. And basically this means that we breathe in for the count of seven, but we breathe out for the count of 11. The reason you have a longer out breath is it because it commands your parasympathetic nervous system to go into a state of relaxation. Now, you can do this, right, a couple of cycles. And the other reason it's important is because the more you practice this within your beauty routine, even when you're checking your makeup in the mirror throughout the day, it makes it easier to activate this relaxation response when you need it. Right. When we activate the relaxation response, we can actually open up the higher perceptual centers of the mind, if you like, so we can think more clearly. It's as simple as that, right? It's quite hard though when you're stressed and you've got kids running around you, you're trying to get them to school and you're going to work and you're like, oh, I've got to breathe five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> That's what you do have to do to practice so that it becomes exactly. natural, right? Exactly, and so if 7-Eleven is too long, and literally you'd put your hands in your belly and let it come out like a balloon and you'd breathe out for this longer out breath, you could do in for five, out for seven. The mm. key is you make the out breath longer because that's working with the body's natural okay. relaxation response. The other thing, is say you're going through beauty ritual and you're cleansing your face, use sensory products, you know, products that actually yeah. maybe you love the scent of, tune in to the texture of them on your skin, to um, the feel of your hands on your face. So this brings you out of your head and back into your body. Right? And that's the key thing is to stop thinking of those daily chores and worries. Yeah and focus on what you're doing right here and now. Exactly, so it brings you right. back into the present. So you've got your step one, okay. your breathing, mm -hmm. right? And you focus on your textures. And you've got your step two, which would be to focus on your what you feel in your body. Because often when we're stressed, we're overriding our physical sensations in our body, mm. which is often why people are suffering from chronic stress nowadays. I mean, small amount of stress is fine, and that gets us through, you know, we trigger off the fight or flight response, we get through the stress, we find a solution to the problem, and then we're fine, right? Mm -hmm. But when we're chronically stressed, we're dumping these chemicals into our body, which is yeah. causing, you know, ultimately um, issues can be with our skin, with our immune function, and the way we behave in general. Um, so we want to tune in to how we feel. Where do you feel the sensations in your body? You were saying to me earlier, 
Like maybe you feel it in your fingers, your hands. Yeah, I get like sort of stressy hands, which is not really good for my, my job. When, when, I, job, when yeah. I'm at work, I suddenly sort of go into this like, not dream-like state, but I kind of, I'm at work, so mm. I take on a different persona, I suppose. Yes. So I become very centred. Yes. But I think I'm being clever if I'm thinking of, you know, what I've got to do that day, thinking of an email, you know, writing it in my head whilst washing my face, because I think that's like multitasking, but actually that's not yes. good for me. Yeah, well, the multitasking can sort of fragment our thinking, so it's actually better mm. if we can focus on doing one task, which I know as, as mothers and, and makeup artists and business people, that can be a challenge. But with your beauty ritual, just focus on what you're doing. So you're okay. tuning into your body. body. And that's being mindful, right? Yes, that's, that's being, being mindful. Present. Exactly. The whole exactly. Thing is. And also not engaging with the bodily sensations, but just noticing where you feel them. And you can almost label them. Say you, you're feeling slightly anxious or, or nervous about something and you feel it in your hands. Just notice, you know, cool hands, warm hands. Um, churning stomach, just label it. And that will decrease the serotonin, will it? And that will no, decrease... All that does, it starts to, with the breathing, you're starting to just calm the nervous system down. Because the next step would be to notice what you're thinking, right? And there's, some, there's a certain thinking style that when we are in a state of fight or flight or very anxious about something, there's a certain thinking style that I call the three Ps. And the three Ps is when we make something very personal, very pervasive and permanent and what that means is say something's happening at work mm -hmm. and you've lost a job or you've had a row with your boyfriend or your husband or something's happened in some area of your life you make it very personal this always happens to me you make it pervasive this is in every area of my life right, right it's yeah. impacting every area of my life you make it permanent this always happens it's never going to change that thinking style locks down any emotional flexibility so we have to be aware if our thinking style is like that. So when you're looking in the mirror, what are you thinking, right? Be aware of your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. and I think that also, you know, when it comes to sort of a, a beauty ritual, sometimes we can set up a dialogue with ourselves that can be quite damning. You know, I think that women can be quite hard on themselves. Um, so if you're going through a challenging day, you're about to go through a challenging day, so you've got a work meeting lined up or whatever, start saying things to yourself that are actually going to enhance the way you feel, rather than thinking, I can't cope, this is a nightmare. Watch your language, because your language creates an emotional response. So if I turn around to you and I say, oh my God, you look exhausted today, right? Or I say, well, you look replenished. Mm -hmm. They're just words, but you're gonna feel you something. It, you take it on board. Don't yeah, you? you're yeah. gonna feel something different, right? Yeah, positive um, thinking. This is it, but it's a practice, mm -hmm. it's like, you don't go to the gym and expect to build a muscle in a week. This is a daily practice. This is That's why. That's a great analogy. You and the can, mind is like a muscle. Absolutely. Yeah. The mind is like a muscle. And the language you use. So we're on to step four now, which is say something about yourself to yourself in the mirror that is positive, that you appreciate about yourself. This helps us have more compassion for ourselves and more compassion for our, you know, our, our imperfect human selves, right? Mm. The more compassion we can have with ourselves, the more we have with other people. So what would um, you say? So I would say something, I mean, I like to base it on something Do about, you do this every day? I do this a lot, yeah. Okay. And you might even do it as if, even if you take one of these, like the breathing and just zooming, you know, consciously massaging your, you know, serums or moisturizers in, even that one thing is going to help you start to calm your nervous system and create an awareness of what you are actually doing throughout your ritual, feeling and thinking, right? Okay. Feeling and thinking. Yeah. And so you'd have your three um, affirmations you like about yourself, three things, you're a kind person, you love your so eyelashes. That's really hard. I struggle with saying nice things about myself. I don't know why, but I do. I found that out recently. It's, I mean, it's a quite a British thing, though. If someone compliments mm. you, do you ever find people sort of say, oh, no, no, you know, yeah, you know, but I, I know I smell really nice today, but honestly, I didn't yesterday, and I looked terrible yesterday. Mm. They make excuses, right? But I often sort of say, just if someone gives a compliment, just say thank you. I have to take it on board. Because yeah. you're pushing it back on the other person otherwise. Yeah. You know? But you have to look. I've had to teach myself that. Yeah. But that's great that you have the because awareness. Because it's annoying when you give someone a compliment and they do bash it away. You're like, oh, I shouldn't have bothered them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I'm like, okay, thank you so much. Exactly. <laughs> you have to remember as human beings, we're always looking to feel an emotion. We're emotional creatures. We love our lives through emotion. This is why yeah. makeup and beauty, it's not the makeup or the beauty, it's the way we feel as a consequence of doing this, right? Mm -hmm. You put on your, your face 
and you feel something different, mm. right? So this is why uh, beauty what and makeup is so you, potent. And what about if you do your makeup and you still feel negative about yourself? Well, there's a thing, you're, there's a negative state you can get into, right? And the other thing I would add into this is that emotion, motion of the body creates emotion, right? If you, when you're in a state of fight or flight, you're anxious, you're dumping these chemicals into your body, your body is meant to use the chemicals. Right. They, they, they use to get us to fight or to flee. But often people have this chronic stress and they're sitting in an office chair or they're right. sitting still. We need to get rid of the, the emotion, get rid of the chemicals in the body. When you, if you ever work out or do yoga, or, you know, generally people feel different afterwards yeah. because you've moved your body, you've created a chemical reaction in your body, which you can then use. So I'm a big fan of saying, put on some music, dance, get your body moving, um, to immediately feel something different and then be aware of your thinking style. And it's a practice, a conscious beauty ritual is a practice mm. that will lead you over time to create more emotional balance and awareness of how you feel and how you mm. think. I'm very interested to see how many of you watching this actually will leave a message below and say, I literally put on my makeup but I don't think about what I'm doing. Hopefully I've helped you with that but also I don't think of how I'm feeling because it's something that I've only really learned in the last sort of 18 months to really be aware of what I'm doing. You know, whether it's a walk in the park and you appreciate the blossom or it's breathing in fresh air, but actually to mm. really take more than just a moment go, oh, that's nice, but then to continue that for a further sort of 15 seconds. Mm. It's a, it's a yes. learned thing. So I wonder how many of you do that and then how many of you will take on board what Lee said and then when you are doing your makeup or cleansing, you will think about something. How long should that process take? How long would you want? Because I need to put a sticky note on my mirror <laughs> to remind myself to do it until it becomes natural, I suppose. Do you know, I think I'm all for breaking these down to very small bite-sized chunks. So if you say, okay, I can, I can factor in the breathing mm -hmm. and just tuning into my body, then just do that one thing. If you find that you're in a very negative space, then focus on your thinking style. So if you you're know, like, I don't want to go to this meeting and I don't want to see this person, then you have to go, right, Breathe. I am going to be good. You have to flip it round positively. And yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Right. But remember, the breathing helps calm the nervous system and that will open up the more uh, rational thinking part of your brain. And that is the key part to all of this. Because yeah, what did you say when I said about my husband? You said something about you react with emotion and then... Yes, because you have emotion. This is not commonly known. You have emotion a split second before you have thought. So we feel something and then we'll think something. So we need to be able to have the awareness of our thinking style so we can loop back round to calm the thought. Yeah. But with breathing... Oh, I wish I could do that, yeah. Well, you can with practice. It's literally... It's... But if that's a natural body response, you emotion, I'm very emotional, so I react and mm. then I think about it and just think, oh, damn it. Well, yeah, and it, you know, some people, and it, it depends, some people are more emotional than others, and it's mm. that know thyself, you know, and to knowing what works for you and implementing coping skills that work to enhance your life. But I hope that has been of some help to you and um, some of you will use some of these techniques to uh, enhance the way you look and, and, and you know, create more emotional balance. She's wonderful and as you can see this subtly goes off on a bit of a tangent but hopefully <laughs> you can make <laughs> it a bit concise but Lee's just full of wonderful wisdom. Um, all her links are below if you want to follow her videos um, on her Instagram. You have a YouTube channel, do you? No, Instagram. Oh. I, I put things on YouTube just to go through to my um, website, but I don't actively do YouTube. It's all on Instagram, yeah. So it's really important making your inside as beautiful as your outside. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts and any other subjects you'd like to cover whilst I have Lee. Thanks for watching.